Madam Chair, I, I would simply like to yes, uh, sure. allow Assemblywoman Bonilla to answer some in as questions. much detail as possible some of the very detailed objections that we just heard. Thank you. Thank you. Happy yes, to. absolutely. I was taking notes. Um, well, it's interesting in the course of this bill, I think one of the main objections that came out was uh, taking away due process. Actually, in the uh, previous form of the bill, uh, uh, which CTA opposed, uh, there was due process in year three and or four. So I am not sure, uh, and, and what I have heard from uh, my work, and there was a lot of stakeholder work on this, it isn't the issue of due process that CTA has a problem with, it's extending it to three years, because my version had due process. They didn't support it, so started to work with acts of the superintendent's organization, who of course have a different point of view. But there was plenty of opportunity to come in with CTA and CFT, CTF's point of view and influence the bill. That was the invitation. Uh, my door was open. We wanted to have stakeholder process that included them. They declined. Um, so I, you know, I can't, um, you know, I can't, um, advocate for their desire to have due process if they won't advocate for it themselves with an extended probation, and they would not. Um, I think that uh, also um, there was a comment about it being an extension of BITSA and that there would be costs associated. That is not in the bill. Uh, we used BITSA as a reference and the coaching component of it. We have clarified it with the amendment taken today that it would be a coach, a mentor uh, that would be provided to the teacher. I would never subject teachers to a third year of BITSA. Anyone who's gone through it, uh, you know, by two years you go out and you burn your papers because you're so sick of it. But what is really valuable in the BITSA program is the coaching. That coaching is um, exceptional and what is in the bill is don't just keep someone on probation for an extra year and let them flounder but have that coach and so we did clarify that in the amendment it is not the bits of program there's no cost to the teacher at all in fact I carried a bill last year uh, that we all agreed on that there should never be a cost for bits and unfortunately the governor vetoed that bill but this does not this bill does not uh, bring about any cost for the teachers uh, it is not um, you know, when we talk about it being an unfunded mandate, this is not appropriations, this is a policy committee. We know there's a lot of costs in education and I would hope CTA would join me in advocating for the funding to provide coaches, not say that we can't afford it. Because if we start saying we can't afford good teacher support, we've lost the battle before we've even engaged. Uh, we should be fighting together to get that coaching for our third year teachers. We should as teachers be fighting to get that support and coaching for our third year teachers. Got an amend. Uh, this is technically a gut and amend. However, I met with the chair uh, back in January and said, I have this bill. It's going to take a lot of time. We, if it was in the assembly, it would have to be heard in March. And it was to allow the time for the vetting. It was to allow the time for the stakeholder process. She uh, graciously agreed to allow me to present the bill uh, here in Senate education so that we would have plenty of time. And I'll tell you, if you look at the endless uh, uh, amendments and various versions in print, it's very clear that this bill was exhaustively vetted over months and everyone has had an opinion and lots of time to talk about their opinions of this bill and to give input. And I was really, um, at the beginning, that was my goal, come and talk about this. But when you hear back, and I actually started in the fall of last year, uh, approaching CTA uh, and CFT and said, and they didn't want to talk about it. They didn't want to do anything on this topic. So at that point, I had to move forward. Um, Let's see, the fact that there's been uh, an improvement that it takes seven months under the current system to dismiss somebody after you've already gotten to the place where you want to dismiss them, uh, to me that is a, uh, an extremely long time. What we didn't touch on is the cost of this current system that we have and what you'll hear from your superintendents if you call them is it can cost one hundred to two hundred thousand dollars to go through that process. I would love to see that money repurposed to coaches for teachers, for PAR, 
for teachers who are struggling. I don't want to see that money go to attorneys. That was my bill originally was, you know, let's bring PAR in, let's help those struggling teachers. And you know, I have every confidence that at the local level, I was part of a bargaining unit. I was a union rep in Mount Diablo Unified School District. And I cannot imagine that we would ever bargain away our rights. You know, please introduce me to the teachers who would do that. You know what teachers might do and will do? They're gonna to bargain to improve their rights. They're gonna to bargain to get par. They're gonna to bargain to get support. And we should allow them today the opportunity to do that. And if you vote no, you're denying teachers the opportunity to bargain to get the support that they need. And I'll tell you, if you talk to teachers, the number one reason they leave the profession at five years, they don't feel supported. If we can change one thing, it would be to allow teachers to get the support in the third year and also when they're struggling, that's what they need. They need it in a lot of other uh, points of, of time too, but we'll start where we can. Negatively impacts students because teachers can't advocate when they are on probation. Now that, if that is happening, there's a problem there. I, I, and there's a problem that the local bargaining unit needs to be all over. The advocates, the teachers, the senior teachers, if there is a, some kind of persecution happening and a fear among our, our, our early teachers uh, that they would have retribution, that is a serious problem. I'm sorry to hear about it. And I would put it squarely back on the local bargaining unit to get in and deal with that with the administration. Again, that's not something we're gonna be able to control at the state level, but the teachers on that school site should be coming around the new teacher. They should say, we're here to help you. You need more textbooks, we'll get them for you. We're gonna work with you, we're a team. And I fully believe that's what usually happens and that that is the best case scenario that is much more common than what was portrayed here. Um, let's see, buy a home, start a family, someone needs to look at their pay stub. Because no one on a teacher's salary is buying a home in year two, three, four, five, six, maybe 15. If we want to advocate for teachers to buy homes and start families, that's about their pay. My daughter just started two years ago teaching, and I think she brings home $42,000 a year. I don't know of any homes or any, any ability that she would have to qualify for a home loan. Uh, putting someone and giving them support for an extra year so they become excellent teachers, I completely reject the fact that that is going to have any impact on them as home buyers. I care very deeply about that issue. We should have housing for our teachers. It's a travesty that they are not paid enough to buy a home, to live in the community that they work in. We should care about that. My bill, though, is not the make or break of a young teacher, a new teacher purchasing a home. Um, and, and I would you know, rally that that's, that's the next rallying cry we need to have with teachers is to you know, look at that beginning salary. If we're having a shortage, it may have a little bit to do with the fact that they're not paid very well and can't start a family and buy a home on that starting teacher pay. Um, there was a comment made about making up their own rules to fire teachers. Again, this goes back to the, to the bargaining unit. I don't think that that's the purpose of any bargaining unit or local union representatives that I've ever encountered. Uh, let's sit down with the boss and figure out how we can fire ourselves. No. You know what's going on here is you have a tiny percentage of teachers who are ineffective. Tiny. Maybe 3%. And all this focus has gone to them. Why? Why in the world are we protecting ineffective teachers that we wouldn't want our own children in their classroom? Why aren't we focusing on the 97% of great teachers? Teachers that have taken on a challenge that none of us, uh, you know, envy. We don't want to be today, well, it's summer, but we wouldn't want to be in September in many of the classrooms in this state. We would be exhausted, we would be demoralized, we would feel overcome at the obstacles and the challenges we are facing as teachers. So what should we do for these teachers? We should support them, we should give them coaching and mentoring, we should allow them at their local levels to make these decisions. Um, and then the final comments. Um, 
I don't even know what to say. I have been in conversations with Mr. Lucia over and over again, asked him to give me amendments, please give me language to show up on the day of the hearing and call the bill severely flawed in drafting when we have in every, I can't even describe the number of good faith efforts I have attempted to make to answer all of his concerns and we have taken a number of amendments and of course that's my goal is to have a strong, clear bill that would go into law and of course I would pledge if that is your concern, this isn't the last stop for the bill. If we get it out today, we will sit down and make sure that we are not creating any kind of uh, unintended negative consequence. You have my word. That is not my intention and certainly not what I would carry out. So um, those are my initial responses. If you heard some other questions, I'd be happy to also address those. And we have our witnesses also back here. Thank you. Sen uh, Senator Hancock, did, um, is it sufficient? Um, actually, I, there were a couple of things that were mentioned that are um, of interest to me. Um, what was amended out of the bill? Uh, some speakers referenced differential, a differential learning trajectory. <laughs> I, I didn't know what that was. I, I wasn't sure either. That I believe in, a, in, the, in the larger version of the bill, we went into depth on the last in, first out um, layoff. And we were attempting in the bill, and I think it actually, hopefully someone will carry it you know, next year, but we, we talked about how to balance um, seniority with, seniority with evaluations. Yeah, because some of the letters that I've received are generally favorable to the bill, but they wish that the flexibility in um, reassignment yeah. was, was, I guess, back in or was included. But I recall we had a bill from the chair of the committee um, several years ago that did something about that, I thought. That, yep, Jack Sawyer. Yeah, maybe. No, it was definitely a different chair. Oh, it was your predecessor, <laughs> Senator Lou. <laughs> Senator, Senator who? Senator Huff. Did you do one of those? Oh, was it? <laughs> well, it, okay. <laughs> but differentiated learning trajectory means flexibility in reassignment. I'd Is like to respond to that since that yeah. was uh, my comment, actually. Um, in the earlier draft of the bill, there was an extended tenure period where um, the third year mm -hmm. teachers had due process rights. Yes. So a teacher could gain tenure after two years or could gain permanent status after two years if the admin decided that that teacher was effective at that point. Mm -hmm. However, if um, a teacher still needed another one or even an additional two years, extending to three or four years before permanent status, then that teacher would have due process rights during that time, due process rights and support. So that's what I meant by a differentiated learning trajectory, is that some teachers are ready to be granted permanent status after two years, others perhaps three, others perhaps four, but in that time they can't be in limbo just waiting to see as they commit their time and their resources just waiting on and on to see. So extending to a third year with no dues process rights is what I was referring to. Okay, I guess um, I, I'm also interested from the author and, and from you would be fine in knowing what we're talking about in terms of due process. And let me say, I, um, one of the big things that we've never really worked out as a society is public employee unions and how they relate to elected people and the power over the institution. Um, I know that when I was elected mayor in Berkeley, we had actually adopted at the behest of our um, public employee unions, a process that literally made it mathematically impossible to fire anybody because it was three management and three labor. And guess what? Nobody ever went over to the other side. And it was very hard to unravel that. So when we say due process, I, I, um, what, what exactly is there now and how would this change that? Well, what was in... Um 
Well, what is in the current version that you're voting on today is a very clear and um, a, just an extension of probation for an extra year. No, no due process. That means that the new teacher can be released without cause and uh, or explanation, uh, or they are retained. Um, that is the decision of the administrator. And I think that one thing that we need to think about too is that we probably need to change some of the terminology. Many, you know, we call it probation, and there's an awful lot of professions that have, you know, apprenticeships or journeymen or, you know, a residency for a young doctor. Or seven years for someone teaching at our university system, right. during which time you can be let go. Um, yes. Or if you don't get tenure, you go. <laughs> That's what also. So I, yeah. um, and what I had, been trying to achieve in the previous version. I'm a little uncomfortable talking about the previous version because it's not what's in front of you today and I don't want to confuse you, but um, you know, it, it had in there an, some options so that there could be a release, an off-ramp at, at two years, which is current. Like you could, it, you know, outstanding person, make them permanent at two or, th you know, and or three. And, but what I did add in my original version was that there would be a limited due process. We were trying to nail it down, trying to work something out. Uh, the unions were not interested in any discussion at all on what the due process should be or could be. They did not want probation extended. So at that point, without any input, um, the superintendent's preference, quite honestly, is to just cleanly extend it to the third year with no due process. And uh, the difference is now that you become permanent. And the reason the superintendents, you know, you, then you have to now currently to be dismissed, go through the panel process that is so costly and unworkable. So what you really now have is your due process is you come in and, you know, you, you, you try to get a settlement. And as I described earlier, and I, I don't think that's very good. And, and if you want to know why superintendents didn't want due process, it's because of the broken mechanism on dismissal. You know, if we had a fix on dismissal, it wouldn't be an issue because there would they wouldn't feel like they're trapped if they keep this person and can never get rid of them. So there's an awful lot riding on fixing and getting a workable dismissal process in place. And I'm not advocating for you know willy-nilly firing teachers at all. But we need something that works. And no, no one can claim that the current system is working when it costs that amount of money. So um, you know I was very open to due process but couldn't gain support uh, except for, I'll be very clear, yes, teachers who were part of Teach Plus um, but I could not gain enough support on, on that issue. Senator, you asked what's in place right now. Judge, hang on. Can I answer hang, the question? No, no. no. Ms. Hancock, would you, would you have a, a, another comment or question? Um, oh, then I was also interested in that, uh, the comment about due process. There was something in it about performance as a professional benchmark. And that that isn't there. Well, that now. you would have to, yeah, in that system, it wasn't just like, you know, there was a standard that if you were highly effective, you could be released oh. at two years. And if you were highly effective, you could be released at three. And so what it was saying was, you know, it isn't just like do your time and you're automatically in, but rather there should be a standard there. And I will say that in with Teach Plus's own um, polling of teachers, most teachers in the state believe that probation should be four or five years. So settling on three years is, a, is, is another compromise, but it, extending probation is supported by teachers in the field because we work alongside those brand new teachers, and we're happy to help them. But uh, again, I'll go back to my point. There's no p purpose in keeping someone on probation without giving them a coach or mentor, without being engaged in raising their performance to a highly effective level. That should be our goal. Well, I, I, I would agree with that, and I would ask the opposition if, if you want to comment on these particular topics. Um, I, Oh, through through the chair. Sorry, Madam Chair. <laughs> Sorry, but um, I feel like I've lived with this issue for such a long time, um, both when I worked in the U.S. Department of Education and um, in local government, and now 14 years on this committee. 
and um, talked to many, many teachers <laughs> over the years about this. Um, and I, the thing that's very attractive to me in this bill is the required mentoring and coaching. You know, I don't think I would have survived in this job when I was first in the legislature <laughs> without mentoring and coaching from my congresswoman who had been in the legislature, from other people. I don't, I think teaching is the toughest, most creative, demanding job on this planet, standing and delivering every day and trying to bring the best out of the people, little people, I want to say, but the, some of them are pretty big, <laughs> um, that, that you have to work with. And getting that coaching and making sure that there is no cost to the teacher in that. Mm -hmm. Because I was horrified to read in one of the letters that sometimes a misunderstanding. teachers have to pay. Right. Okay, um, to me is is a critical piece, and I, I would suggest changing probation because it does sound like we're expecting you to fall off a cliff or not do well. Like you need a probation. And that officer. isn't what it yeah. is. It's like I consider it like being an assistant professor at the university, and I would also note that we know very very well that. Such a large percentage of teachers counsel themselves out, and um, for many reasons. And that's why I'm, I really love the coaching piece of this and um, the fact that it would keep a conversation going. But through the chair, I would be. Right. You'd be interested in hearing mm -hmm. from the opposition. Mm -hmm. Briefly, please. Yes. Uh, I mean, just on that mentoring piece. Um, we did see that in the first version of the bill there was a portion about peer assistance and review. That's a program that you know has worked very well in different areas of the state and we did suggest to the author, I mean I would respectfully disagree with the assertion we haven't uh, had any conversations at all about what would work for us. We expressed that peer assistance and review, this mentoring is something that we value and that if we wanted to put some kind of best practices piece together that folks could draw from in the state as a good model, that would be excellent. That's been a program that's great, but uh, we have come to the table every time as requested by the author. I've personally sat with the author for mm -hmm. an hour, uh, so I would respectfully disagree that we're not coming to the table or suggesting alternatives or having discussions. We've been very active. In fact, initially the first couple times that we requested meetings with the author, we didn't hear back at all. Thank you. Any other questions, um, Senator? No. Okay. Um, Senator Monning. Well, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I want to start by just thanking the author for her obvious commitment to achieving what's best for our children, first and foremost, for teachers who are essential to success of our children. Uh, you bring to this your experience as a teacher, as a parent, um, and so I just applaud what is clearly uh, a strong motive to improve on the status quo. Uh, that said, I do have concerns and uh, issues with the bill in its current form, and I think one of the issues that is is hard to have data on is this: if you extend a probationary period from two years to three years, um, you're extending by one year the time by which somebody can be let go without cause. And the reality on school sites and classrooms, dynamics between teachers, <coughs> union members and administrators, uh, where you aren't eligible for a good cause due process hearing, it, does, it, it, it puts a restraint on a new teacher to participate not just in trying to improve their classroom excellence, but to be part of that union team of looking at safe working conditions, safe conditions for students, maybe complaining about inadequate administrative support in the classroom, on the school site, uh, and it, it creates this atmosphere of restraint, of minding your P's and Q's, not not stepping up to maybe uh, put a finger on an injustice or uh, uh, engage fully in democratic and protected rights because of the fear 
of dismissal. And there's no way to catalog because at the time of a dismissal during that probationary period, it may be rooted in ineffective classroom performance. It can be rooted in some other discriminatory motive, but it is not considered discriminatory if it happens during that probationary period. So for any reason. So I think the, the concern <coughs> expressed by opponents um, about the extension of the probationary period, certainly a lot of your ideas to use that third year to, to enforce support, peer support, improvement, et cetera. But I still don't think it gets us over the hurdle of the potential adverse consequence to somebody who wants that career in teaching and wants to be part of the broader teaching community, uh, uh, maybe supporting classified employees in an issue that they have with the administration. Uh, so I think, I think that's an issue that's hard to quantify because you don't have good data to know what compelled that decision to terminate or let go. Uh, and then you, you did comment in your responses about uh, it's unrealistic to think any new teacher is going to have the income to be a home buyer. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they still, with a, the support of another wage earning spouse, maybe the support of family, uh, aspire to start a family and, and to get a loan to buy property uh, that a lending institution, if they see you're still on a probationary status, uh, will not, you, you won't go to the next step to see if you might qualify. Uh, and I do think telling potential teachers, if you ch choose this as a career path, you won't know if you're qualified and permanent until three years. Um, versus two years. That, that could be a tipping point for somebody deciding, do I really want to pursue a path of uncertainty in a professional career? So more of a statement than a question, I guess, but uh, uh, I, I do appreciate and applaud your objectives. And I just think um, for this to be successful, there has to be uh, the participation of teachers in a manner that um, is a win-win for all. So uh, I don't know if you want to comment on any of those issues. The, maybe the one that you haven't addressed is how do you guard against uh, this serving as a restraint on somebody exercising their rights to be who they are, to introduce maybe controversial subject matter to their students in a fair and respectful manner, but that may offend the sensibilities of somebody who now has the power to let them go for no cause. Um, I would like to respond, and then if it's all right with the chair, I would ask um, Superintendent Morris perhaps to weigh in as he is actually involved in, in this. But I, I guess, um, the you know, if there is a problem there, we should be addressing it because it's happening right now for everyone who is on probation for two years. Okay, so if there's a problem, that's something that is a separate issue that we should be addressing. I think the crux of the matter is, do you believe that it is helpful and better and necessary to have a third year? We could then have the conversation uh, with the unions about what does due process look like? But we can't get the agreement to even extend, the willingness to extend probation to three and four. So we couldn't have that conversation. So I think that um, I, you know, the, the, if there is a problem there, let's get together and figure out how to fix it because it's there today. It's there for every teacher in year one and year two. So what I'm trying to do though is step back and address a larger picture issue, which is, the early training to bring our teachers to a, a level of excellence, to keep them from burning out so that they don't quit because they're overwhelmed. Uh, and those are the issues that are before us truly today that I think many, many teachers would receive tremendous benefit from this bill. If I believed that this bill was gonna harm one teacher in the state of California, if I believed that myself, I would never carry this bill. Uh, and if there is another insidious 
you know, issue out there, let's tackle it, let's deal with it and figure out, you know, what we're gonna do and not just let the first year and two, you know, hang out there either. But I would like um, uh, Jim Morris, if it's okay through the chair, to respond as a superintendent. Briefly. Sure, I, I can only add to Senator Bonilla's comments in our school district, for example, uh, over the last three years, we have probably about 20 probationary teachers. We're a medium-sized school district, 1,600 teachers, 35,000 students. About 20 probationary teachers are released every year. And I, I would say at least five of those, I, I'm not, we, we just don't give you the benefit of the doubt. And at least in five of those cases, I really believe that with additional support and some additional time, we really could help that person become an excellent teacher. Um, but where there's the benefit of the doubt, you know, or because of that two year time period, we do go ahead and do the probationary release. And I, and I would just add to that, that that's why I think the support is the accountability factor. Because if we believe there's some, you know, system out there to persecute and, and undermine and just abuse these early teachers, I don't think you're going to have districts paying for their coach to be there. And I would hope that that coach would act as the eyes and the ears and the accountability in that third year teacher's classroom. So I'm not just saying throw them to the wolves in the third year. I'm saying bring, bring the tenured teacher right alongside them. Let that teacher be in the classroom. I think that raises the level of accountability of any nefarious activities by administrators. Senator Block. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, I don't want to go through point by point as several folks have already done this bill. I, I can only say that the author um, for the six years she's been here has been probably one of the most articulate, caring, knowledgeable advocates for education for children that we've had in the legislature. And, and for your work over six years, I truly salute you. On this particular bill, I've had people visit my office, the Vergara plaintiffs visited my office yesterday and said that they had concerns about the bill. CTA and CFT have talked about their concerns. Um, to me, for a bill like this, such an important bill, to be successful, you've got to have buy-in. And buy-in from teachers and the organizations representing teachers, and buy-in from parents and students and those representing them. And, and that buy-in just doesn't seem to be here. Um, I mean, IAX is an important organization, certainly PTA is an important organization, but to, to affect the kind of change that Ms. Bonilla wants to affect, um, I think we need more complete buy-in, and that may be asking a lot, but I think it's essential. I, I, we all do, as you said when you began your presentation, we all fall in love with our bills. Well, we all fall in love with our bills, but then our bills suddenly start to change and change more and change again because we need to, for this political process, take amendments that lets our bills survive. And suddenly the bill you end up with isn't the bill you started with. Um, so again, not wanting to go through point by point because that's been done already. I just want to, again, thank the author for all of her work on education, but say that for the reasons enumerated, I, I can't be supportive of this particular bill. Senator Huff. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we've managed to create something in my 12 years I haven't seen before, which is CTA and the education advocates <laughs> opposing the same bill. Right. Uh, and I've seen a lot in my time. Um, Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. First of all, I appreciate all the teachers, all the teachers that are here. Um, you are at the vanguard of educating our kids, our next generation, and you have a tough job. On the other hand, I admire and appreciate the kids, Representative Vergara, plaintiffs, the parents that are here today saying, we deserve better. And I think you're trying to strike that balance of doing something better, and we're seeing sausage get made and it's kind of ugly, and I don't know all the secret ingredients and that concerns me, and we've heard that it's the drafting is seriously flawed. It started off something bigger than whittled down, I get that. So I've also heard you say that it was a gut in the men to give more time from January. Part of my frustration is I was bought in a day and a half ago. So uh, my part of the sausage is a little bit of flavoring, perhaps. <sighs> but um, I admire what you're trying to do with extending the probationary period. 
it's not news to this committee. I've tried that a couple of times before with different variations of that and had some of the people at the table up here saying the reasons why that's a horrible thing. Uh, and yet I do think it's essential to um, not only extend the time before those teachers are made permanent, but also to come alongside them and help them. Um, um, you know, the data that I've seen shows that teachers get better over the first three years pretty dramatically. And so if somebody is struggling in their second year and a superintendent's going to or principal's going to pull the plug on them because they just don't have that certainty, I do believe that it is good for them and good for the district to have that extra time and also have somebody coming alongside, much like the master teacher and their student teaching um, years perhaps, coaching them, helping them. Um, I think that's a good thing. So I'm still struggling with all the rest of the stuff here. Um, if this doesn't get out on the first pass, I would love to talk to you um, right after this. <laughs> Senator, Senator, Sen oh, after. Senator, uh, Senator Vidak. <clears throat> I too would like to thank the author for uh, coming in and speaking with me twice on this bill and the merits of the bill. And over the past few weeks, I've spoken with many of my constituents, stakeholders. Some were in support, some were in opposition, some were the same people. <laughs> I was in it for more than a day. Um, and I've, so I've really had to do the homework and understand what's in this bill and what's not in the bill. And overall, I support probably m the majority of the changes this bill seeks. But I have hesitation in other areas where I'm just maybe going too far. On balance, most of my concerns are the timing because the, the timing and, and not having a lot of time to actually get this bill ready. This is a huge pol policy area that doesn't get changed often. And we must acknowledge that this is the first time many of us, most of us have seen this entire proposal today. If this had been last June, I'd probably have been more comfortable working with the bill. But uh, we've only got 20 legislative days left, and this is a, just a major, major deal to be changing, and, and I'm not sure what it's going to turn into in the next 20 days either. There's been a lot of amendments. Things are coming in and out. If it makes it to the floor, I'll look at it again. But today, because of the timing and uh, just I just don't think it's ready. I, I can't support it today. But, um, you know, next year we're going to have a brand new education committee, and I would love to work on this deal again. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, you can take another second bite of the apple here. Okay. Well, I actually had, te I consider what I said before technical questions, Madam Chair. Um, and I want to say to my friends, who I've worked closely with in the teaching profession and others. Um, I am going to vote for this bill today for some of the reasons that Senator Vidak indicated give him pause. And that is because it will keep this conversation going with a little pressure on people. In the 14 years that I have sat on this committee, we have never had anything other than a banal, stereotyped confrontation on any of this issue. And I think that uh, Assemblywoman Benia being a teacher and caring about the profession has made every effort to do this. I would suggest a few changes too. I like the stuff that used to be in there that got taken out. Um, if the bill moves on to appropriations, that could be a conversation. It will have to go back to the other house and probably go through a policy committee and something there. Then it will come back here for concurrence. This is the way the legislature works. And, and to me, my vote for this bill today is say, let's sit down and get real, everybody and try to find something that's going to work. I want that coaching for teachers. I think they need it. I would like to see a flexible system. I'm really appalled to think that our school administrators may be a bunch of oppressors waiting to fire people. And there may be some, just like there are very few bad teachers, but most people don't get into the profession for that reason. They get in because they want to help kids. So... 
how do how do we change that culture? I mean, I've also seen brilliant principals go into very hard pressed public schools and just by their positive leadership make everything a whole lot better. So I like the parts of the bill that talk about training and various things for administrators as well. I, I think that if this bill doesn't get out today, we're essentially dooming ourselves to every couple of years having this very same process happen. And for that reason, um, supporting the ongoing conversation and urging people to be flexible. Let me say, I am dedicated to public schools and it breaks my heart that some of the experiences I have had that have led my own grandchildren to leave the public school system because there was a teacher who told children they were stupid and the administrator said, I just don't have the time to do the process, sorry. Exit. I have two grandchildren in a charter school. They didn't want to have to deal with the barrack. I don't, that, I don't like that. I don't want that. I think that we can get a flexible partnership system. Anyway, I'm voting to continue the conversation. Would, would you like to move the bill? Oh, I would, yes, I would move the bill. Is there any more uh, comments, questions from members? I too really want to thank you um, for your effort in this, in this really important subject matter of supporting our teachers. And I know that this bill is far from perfect, but I agree with Senator Hancock that it starts a very, very important conversation. And we all, are, some of us in here, are agreed that we really do need to do something positive for our uh, very important workforce that uh, you know addresses the needs of our kids. And so, um, and I also like the part about strengthening our administrators. I have been part of an evaluation by an administrator who really didn't know what I was doing in a classroom. And uh, so it does, they do need training too. So I, you know, this is an important conversation to have. And I agree with Senator Hancock that if we don't move this bill, the conversation will not continue or continue every other year. And we really do need to, I, mean, I, I think you've drawn the opposition so varied in terms of the teachers, students, and others that um, you really drew a crowd um, that they are important voices that also need to be drawn into the conversation and maybe they'll take it more seriously if, if we let this bill out. So. Um, Senator Hancock, uh, move the bill. And may I close? Absolutely. Thank you very, very much. I, I too have been seeking buy-in, but we're in a situation that is so deeply polarized and so deeply political that the children are being lost. The children are being overlooked. Another year, six million students grow older another year, go into another classroom. It truly is time to take action now. I love my profession. I am so um, saddened when I hear the teaching profession criticized. My goal with this bill is to begin to make the positive change that will change the discussion, that will say, we acknowledge there are issues and we can work together to fix them. I want buy-in. I asked for buy-in. <laughs> You've seen what's happened. And I'm not sure that's gonna change with a no vote on my bill. We all came here, um, and, and, I, and I will say, and I do wanna recognize every teacher that is in, including Carol Liu, as a teacher, and, and some of you here, I want to recognize all the teachers that came today. And I want to reaffirm my commitment to work on their behalf and on behalf of all the students in California to make their profession strong, sterling, excellent, and well-supported, because I really do believe that is the solution. Uh, so I may not be here next year, but I will continue, I hope, to be a strong voice 
on behalf of teachers and students in public education in California. Um, you know, when we come here, and I am a, an English teacher, so I just couldn't resist, uh, I, I do have a quote I'm going to read, uh, and it's meant a lot to me, and I think it captures all of us here who have been elected when we've uh, had our constituency send us here and when we've taken the oath of office. Theodore, I think, Roosevelt knew uh, what we face, and this is from a speech that uh, is titled The Man in the Arena. He gave it in 1910. And uh, I think it sums up a lot of what I feel, and I think all of us feel every day <laughs> as we're going through the process of representing our community uh, in the strongest way possible. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man and the woman who is actually in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends herself and himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. I ask for your I vote. Thank you. Let's call the roll. Item number three, AB 934. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Lou? Aye. Lou, aye. Block? No. Block, no. Hancock? Aye. Hancock, aye. Huff? Leva? No. Leva, no. Mendoza? Monning? No. Monning, no. Pan? Vidak? No. Vidak, no. That's 2-4. Two, 2-4. Four. Two, four. We'll keep the roll open. Thank you. Thank you. You have two other bills. I sure do. I'm not going anywhere. 